Cardelli Jones and the big Bronco. Bill wanted me to drive one of his Broncos. And I told Bill, I said, no, it's probably not my bag. He kept insisting he knew how to get to me. And he said, well, you're probably not man enough. And that was like throwing a red flag. So I took off not knowing what to do, frankly. And he put a guy by the name of Ray Harvick in the vehicle with me. And I told Ray to, you know, tap me on the leg if I'm doing something wrong, running too fast. Of course, he about beat me to death, and he was right and I was wrong because I just literally tore the thing up and never did get to the first checkpoint. Once you stick one in a hole or bend the front end or blow a couple of front tires out or something like that, you're really in trouble. But I was at the same time getting the bug, something so much different than I had been doing, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And the Mexican people, they would invite us into their Houses with a dirt floor, I mean, it's just as clean as a pen. They'd serve us, you know, fish tacos and lobster tacos, and, and they just were so gracious and they're so proud. It was just very, very enjoyable. I wanted to win overall. I didn't want to just be a, a participant in a class or anything like that. I wanted to beat the motorcycles, I wanted to beat, you know, and they were the ones that were winning all the races at the time, and they were so much faster than the cars. Bill Strop built a cheaper version of the Bronco, so to speak. It was a two-wheel drive. I said, man, that's what I want. Without pre-running, I lined it up for the 500, and we uh, won the 500 with that. The car was so beat up, and my friend uh, Ray Brock said, that's the winner, I'd hate to see what the losers look like. Bill was not real enthused about the whole car uh, until we started doing well and how quick it was. After we won the 71 by 1,000 with it and, and just blistered the record, he kind of fell in love with it then. Next is Parnelli Jones in the Ford Bronco number 62. Bill, you know, was a very mild, gentle man and never cussed or anything like that. But when he got in that car, his personality changed 100%. I mean, he'd beat on me and tell me to slow down. There's coyotes out here. There's, we don't want to spend the night. There's snakes and all that and uh, and you know he'd be and he'd get me to slow down and I needed that he was a great asset for me in the car I came into the last pit stop it's about 120 miles or something like that to the finish line so I figured that the 12 gallons that went in the left side I mean they motioned me on I, I figured it would ought to be enough to get me to the end well, I got about within 10 or 15 miles from the finish line and I'm up on the Mesa and I see the lights of La Paz, but I'm sitting there and man, I'm, you talk about hurt. I mean, I'm walking up and down the highway and everything else. Finally, there was a little light coming and it looked like a bicycle light. And I didn't think it was ever gonna get there, but it just finally creeped up there. Well, it happened to be two Mexican guys in a uh, Volkswagen and the belt had come off. So they had to, no generator or anything like that, but they did have a full tank of fuel. Thank God. Anyway, I pulled out, I always carried some money, and I pulled out a $20 bill and I gave it to the Mexicans. And oh, I said, you got a bottle? And they had a bottle of tequila. Yeah, and uh, back here's the bottle. And uh, so I pulled off a windshield wiper hose and siphoned about 15 bottles of gasoline, kept pouring it in the car. Uh, got enough to finish. And when we started, the record was 16 hours and something. I don't remember exactly what it was. But anyway, the officials, Don Francisco and Ed Perlman and the rest of them, would all make a pool of what was going to be the overall quickest time. And Nico Saad is a friend of mine. And he uh, asked me how long it was going to take me. 
I said 15 hours. Anyway, I did it in 14 hours and 59 minutes. And I think if I told him the world was coming to an end, he'd probably believe me. Bonelli Jones and Bill Strop had done it. The Bronco had stood up against an incredible pace that had tamed the 1,000 mile course. When I came into it, uh, that was about the time it started getting a little professional. Then it was more of a recreational thing, really made it really enjoyable. Well, those days were gone. It's now very professional, flag to flag, so to speak. And I, even though the cars are handled better and everything else, uh, I don't think it's any nowhere near as much fun as we had. Well, I'm the kind of guy I don't carry much on my chest. You know, if I got something to say, I say it. In my day of racing, 60s and 70s, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I think we've raced in the best of times. I can't